All right, people, welcome back. More Daily Duels. So today is Wednesday. We are playing them Earthbound Immortal Monarch. And uh, the deck took a hit. It really did. It really did. Uh, that chicken game. There was chicken games in here. It really was to kind of fill in the whole terraforming field space kind of plays. And now it's it's gone. And it's sad. Mm. <laughs> this man over here is playing them resonators. So, yay. <laughs> I'm going to get beat. Um, my Wednesday deck is going to get its ass beat by the Thursday deck. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that kind of sucks, because I really, uh, really didn't need this deck getting hit. It's not the best of decks, so that really does suck that this deck got hit like that, but we'll still try. We'll still try to do the plays, the busting out the, the powerful uh, Earthbound Emeralds and Monarchs and all that, so. And uh, hopefully everything will go to fruition, so we'll play our one upstart. Our one upstart is limiting is just real. I think I might go ahead and Twin Twister, but I don't know what I want to pitch. Uh, I would love to bust out my Earthbound Immortal, but I'm just not sure right now. So I think I might go ahead and pitch my Earthbound Immortal, pop, and then bust out my Monarch. I think I think that would be the the best play for right now. So go ahead and pop those two. Uh, oh, okay. I was about to say Selim Strikes because that card didn't get hit either. Just, sometimes it's just fucking crazy that they didn't hit shit like that. So I can go ahead and play that. And as long as there's no effect veiler in his hand, that should have this play. Which is great. I mean, like I said, I'd love to bust out my Earthbound Immortal plays. But for right now, this is this is the best play. So, we'll go ahead and send you. I won't get my uh, my idea, which kind of sucks. But we'll go ahead and send that OG and that Candidi. And we'll go ahead and choose on the field. Oh, wait. No, I should have said in the hand because I can attack over this. I completely forgot about uh, Domain's additional uh, damage. Completely forgot about it. So then we can go ahead and activate Pandeity, Banish. I guess I'll go ahead and show you three uh, Emperors and give me an Emperor because that's just what this deck does. The main Emperor, just Monarchs, man. So you're probably looking at your t at the title and you're like, what's up? Uh, reset button, right? Uh, Mega Kappa G recently put up a video discussing about, you know, whether Konami should, when it comes to the ban list, should nuke the meta uh, and create a brand new meta. Just tear down what's currently uh, here. And rebuild up, you know, kind of like uh, what they did in OCG, where they just hit everything that was pretty much tier one. Um, and I want to go ahead and get my opinion on that. So to start off with, uh, I don't think we should go to the extreme of uh, doing a reset button, but I wouldn't mind everything that's tier one getting a bop on the head. You know, that sticks. I'm not saying like, oh, you're tier one, well, you lose this, 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 and this, and you use this, 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 and this. But you know, I definitely don't like the lists where, and we get these lists on occasion. Definitely the the current list where just the tippy top deck, the best deck, the best deck, it gets hit. But everything under it, despite being in the same tier, despite being uh, just as competitive, goes off scot-free. I mean, Monarchs, pretty much Cosmos, you know, scot-free. I don't like that. That, I do not like. That's the shit I don't like. So, uh, I mean, I guess I can go ahead and summon Idea, and, I mean, use Idos, summon Idea, Idea, summon Eros, and then go for another Earth, and go for an Earthbound Immortal. So, Idos, go ahead and summon me Idea. Uh, someone said that I should start using Primal. I really should. I'm, I'm not a Monarch player. I, I really don't even like the deck, but, you know, you guys said Earthbound Immortal Monarch, so I'll do it. I'll go ahead and do it, so. Go ahead and get an additional normal summon. Tribute off you two. Through you, Idea. Go ahead and give me that Panditi. And these two, these two, Panditi, it's just so ridiculously good. Like, everything is so ridiculously good. I'm gonna hold off on, on my plays. Uh, I don't think that shit's gonna hit the fan. I mean, it pretty much locked him out of the extra deck, which means that uh, he's gonna have a bad time, you know. And you can't touch any, uh, can't touch my monsters because of March. Like, you pretty much have to get, like, Twin Twister or something right now. Because you can't even synchro summon into your resonator play, so. GG? <laughs> you know, G, G the fuck G? Nah, he's not, he's not backing down. And even if you, like, Red Wolf, that's cute. I and mean, even if you build up a wall of monsters, I can still just go attack over. So, let me see what you're going to do. Because that, yeah, just go ahead and scoop it up. That's what I thought. Alright, we'll, we'll go ahead and get another dual bear back. So, uh, you know, Meg Capital G was talking about how we should have nuked the meta, everything should have been hit that was top tier, and and created a new meta, but you gotta, you gotta really think, I mean, what's really selling and being popular right now? We're, we're, we're kind of in a hole, you know? If we would, if we would tear down the meta right now, what would replace the current meta decks when it comes to new content? There's really not too much, I mean, of course we have Shining Victories coming up, and we'll be getting some new decks, uh, possibly joining the meta, 
uh, upcoming with that, and that's great and all, but, you know, where, where are we going from there? You know, like, he's like, oh, oh, we should make, like, Buster Blader and, like, and, like, Black Lesser Soldier, you know, those should be, like, the top tier decks, like, why? So you can turn around and say, all right, well, those are the top tier decks, so hit them, and it just, it would just be, like, a, a slippery slope of just, all right, every deck, it's like, you know, like, you guys are the meta, all oh, y'all are dead. All right, now you're the mini meta, all right, all oh, you're dead. And the end of the ban list would just be flooded with shit, you know? Because every single, pretty much, list would be killing off, like, fucking three or four deaths, every single list. So, I don't think we should just do a complete reset button. I don't think that's the smartest idea. I just love when you get hands like this and fucking monarchs. Like, I, I don't care what you say. I mean, monarchs, of course, still great. Still got your, all, all your cards, all your cards. You know, I would've just been fine with just Panditi here. You know, tell you the truth, I would just been fine with just Panditi hit to one because that card's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous draw. But um, Panditi, I mean Pantheism, not Panditi. I guess it's its old name, Pantheism Panditi. I think so. OCG name? I don't remember. But uh, still, it is. Sometimes it is still an, an inconsistent piece of shit. Like God, I'm number generating all my Earthbound Immortals, so that would have been great to have. I, I, I'm, I'm doing my plays, I have my plays, just I need one of my boss monsters, whether it be, you know, a reverse or one of my Earthbound Immortals, because I can't do shit with these two. Like, holy crap. <laughs> so, uh, I'm playing terraforming, is that okay? Like, I'm not even gonna do anything to you this turn, I'm just, really, I'm just deck thing. I don't care if I reveal my deck, because, I mean, it's ghost tricks. If he wants to kick the shit out of me, it's fine. Uh, to fill in for the chicken games and all that, I was like, screw it, throw in the Solemn Strikes, that card didn't get hit, so, might not play it, <laughs> you know, lock down my opponent even harder, if there's even a, a glimpse, glimmer of a threat against me, Solemn Strike it, why not, I'll pay the life points, I mean, it's arguably more stronger than, uh, Solemn Warning, and that's at one, so, it's, it's arguably stronger than a lot of the cards that, uh, are currently, uh, hit at one for trap cards, but hey, I'm decided not to hit it. In OCG or the TCG, I think that I really have to just think that that was TCG just following suit. Like, well, OCG doesn't have strike strike hit, so I guess we won't hit it either. I mean, maybe it has to do something with money, maybe, maybe because I guess it is the most expensive card in uh in Breaker or Meta. But uh, it's just like okay, okay, so we're not gonna hit strike. I mean, like I said, any any inherent summon or any monster effect hand field a graveyard for 1500. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. We have Divine Wrath. We gotta, you know, discard to stop any monster effect. This is just like, pay 15. I'd rather pay 15 than discard. I'd rather pay life points than neg on resource than I don't know what happened. Alright, we'll get another dual bear back. So, no. I'm not, I'm not for completely nuking the meta. Because it, it would just be an endless loop of, uh, alright, well, we gotta create a new meta. New, these cards at the top tier, we need to hit those. New, these cards at the top tier, we gotta hit those. And loop 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 and that, that's not fun. That's not, that's not fun. That's not Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so, no, I'm not, I'm not big, a big fan of that idea. But, I am for, like I said, hitting every single thing. So, this list, for example, this list, you, you pretty much killed Draco Pals to the extent that you thought you did. I mean, we might see variations, I don't think that the player base is gonna go out like that, per se, but, uh, definitely, you hit it. You, you definitely hit Draco Pals, alright, good job. Alright, now move down the list, and I'm not saying move down the list and then slaughter that deck, but hit it, you know? What's next? Alright, well, uh, Marks, what should we do with them? Well. Pantheism is kind of a stupid card. We, we upped the lure, which was the stupid draw card, and now you want to exchange anything? You know? Like, hmm, hmm, which one's worse when it comes to drawing? Pantheism or lure? Now, while lure is more flexible, at least it's a balanced card. I'm just still zero out. Pantheism, not only am I drawing into two, the next two cards, which is just great for Monarchs, it pretty much gives you a reset hand, but uh, you also uh, uh, get to do that banish searching, and that's power in itself, too. So you pretty much plus one. So, hmm, which card is worse? Yeah. Uh, moving down the list, you know, uh, Cosmos. Uh, emergency Teleport to two? Like, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe had to do something with money, because come on, you know that card should be at one. I believe it's even at one in OCG, and they don't even have Cosmos. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> like, come the fuck on with that. <laughs> like, no, thank you. I'll go ahead and send Panditi. Go ahead and send the OG Monarch. Uh, I could shuffle something from his hand. I mean, the back row, is that card? I mean, he really can't touch me. So, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and just pick something out of your hand. Shuffle that back for me. That's pretty good. Then, uh, go ahead and activate, uh, Panditi. And next turn, if everything goes okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal, 
free domain, so get me a domain. Because I already have a march. Next turn, I can go ahead and go Eidos summon an idea, idea summon back uh, another Eidos. And this is the reason why I say you should run three or three, because they're so good together. And the last thing you need is to draw what idea and two Eidos dead, you know? So I definitely think that he's, and he's worth running at three as well, especially with Mark Stormforth and just getting that additional tribute when he summons. So definitely. I like, don't underestimate Eidos either. He's good too. Go ahead and play uh, Domain, and then attack, and then next turn, banish, summon, summon from the deck, and uh, summon my Earthbound Immortal, uh, uh, Ka-pa-ka-poo, Ka-ka-ka-ka-poo, ka 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 I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> so, yeah, sure, I guess, so, I'm assuming something I should assume the worst and assume something sacky. Yeah, it feels like it. Like card, card D, battle fader, no extra deck. Like I should just, I should just assume the worst. What the fuck card is this? Inflict three hundred damage to your opponent for each card they control. This card in the field is destroyed by. Okay. So it's a burn deck. Well, now since I know it's a burn deck, then I'll just clean up all your set burn cards. Like okay, and then I'm just gonna attack over you. Uh, well, I mean, I guess. I, I, I think I'm running out of them. No. About the one, two, yeah, I'm about to run out because I'm about to summon another one for my, my last one for my deck, so. That's not good. Go ahead and use you, summon idea. At least I'll get my Pantheism back. This is similar to, I think, the first duel? Yeah, the first duel. Like, pretty much the same exact place, but hey, I mean, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it when it comes to this deck, right? So, go ahead and tribute off you two. Go ahead and activate you. Go ahead and give me my pen deity back. Like, look at this. Like, even if the pen deity went to one, you could still recycle the shit out of it. You know, I only have one pen deity right now, recycling the shit out of it. He scooped. But multiple pen deity, being able to have to card multiple times, draw multiple times. The only thing that would search once per turn, but still, that draw, so good. All right, we'll go ahead and get a uh, another duel. Bear back. So, Cosmos. Like I said, uh, I mean, it's, it's the big TCG deck. I uh, didn't expect it to get any uh, direct hits, similar to like Burning Abyss the first time, uh, but, okay, this is getting annoying. Like, I don't care, just do the damn Paper Rock Scissors. <laughs> uh, God, sometimes I just do not get any tributors. I'm number generating the Earthbound World and everything, it's, nope. Uh, God, yo, you got the road and number generator, can I get an Earthbound World and number generator? Like, that's what I really want. All right, ignites even even the weaker of uh, a pendulum based deck. The anxiety sets in, and I guess I'll just be watch, sitting here watching this man play with himself. I mean, it's, come on, it's ignites, right? It's ignites. Anyway, uh, you know, emergency teleport to one for a first hit. I would have been fine with that. Maybe maybe something else. I don't know. I don't know. But um, well, I guess reasoning, reasoning, emergency teleport back both to one for Cosmos. Sure, I've been fine with that. But to two, like two. Like, come on, even OCG has it at one, and they don't even have Cosmos, that's ridiculous. So, not a big fan of that going to two. Definitely would have said that's one, so. Uh, you know, uh, what's next, what's next? Probably, probably Phantom Knights? Probably something with that? No, no, not Phantom Knights, Burning Abyss. How the fuck? Like, that deck has been tier one since its existence in August 2014. Almost a year and a half, that deck has been tier one. Burning a fucking abyss. Like, don't you think that deck is kind of, you know, we hit it, we hit it indirectly, we hit it directly, and it's still the hot shit. Maybe you should do something about that. But I guess you're like, hey, we want to sell them Beatrices. I mean, for goodness sakes, OCG had Burning Abyss less than, uh, uh, less timeless, and hit it harder. It's just like, who, who, wait, who's the conservative ones, and who are the liberal ones here? Because I'm getting confused here, because we're mixing shit up right now. So, not the biggest fan of that. Powerful Pendulum Summon, that, that is, that's great. I did not open up that well at all, it really comes down to what do I draw. Gonna bust out maybe like a Photon Strike Bouncer? I was thinking that, I was thinking a Photon Strike Bouncer. And then you're gonna pop your Pendulum Scales anyway? Like, shit, okay, I guess. I, really, I probably would've held on to that Pendulum Scales unless you have another one in your hand, but, I mean, hey, it's the Pendulum Mechanic, right? Just summon a whole bunch of mon monsters and jump the shit out of your opponent. Just so many things that make you want to just leave Yu-Gi-Oh. These, 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 uh, 
not telling us when the list is, and then when you give us the list, it's booty, and then depends on the mechanic. There's so many things that should make you just want to quit Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? So, anyway, this is going to be a very difficult duel, uh, especially with Photon Strike Bouncer. Oh, I can Monarch Storm Forth him. I can Monarch Storm Forth him. It's just the problem is that as soon as I summon Edos, he, I believe he activates. I believe he activates so I can get hit with the Photon Strike Bouncer, and that would suck. So I guess I should go ahead and just deck then. I was thinking about maybe using... Uh, that's a problem right now. This is really a problem. Photon Strike Bouncer is fucking me up. I can go ahead and Pantheism and pitch my Monarch Storm forth. And then get it back, I guess. Yeah, I think... Uh, well, I, before that, I just need a Tribute Earth. So I guess I'm going to have to pitch one of these. So... Do you activate when this card is done with something during the main phase? You contribute one monster. Into I believe you activate. So if you activate, I'm sure that he can negate me. And then I won't get my additional tribute, which would suck. So that Photon Strike Bouncer is like the perfect enemy for me right now. Really is. I need, I need my Phil. If I could get my Phil Spell and my Monarch, like. Okay, well, I got my Monarch. So, if I get another filled spell, I can decrease my level, then Monarch Stormforth, tribute you off. Like, I think I might have something. I think I might have something. So, we'll go ahead and activate Pandeity. Uh, I'm going to show you Monarch... No. Domain. Domain. And another Pandeity. It'll probably give me the Pandeity, which is fine, because I'll, I'll just go ahead and get rid of this march and try to get deeper into my deck for another field spell. And I can play the field spell, decrease my level, Monarch Storm... Wow, he gave me the field spell. Thank you, because that's exactly what I fucking wanted. Like, that's exactly what I fucking wanted. So, I'm going to go ahead and activate my field spell. I am definitely going to go ahead and Monarch Storm forth. So, and then Scoops. Yes! Yes, I got out of that situation. Thank God. See, Pandeezy, so good. The pitch, get deep into my deck, and the search. Like, oh, God, it's so fucking good. So fucking good. We'll get another duel. Bear back. So, Burning Abyss, like I said, they, I definitely think they should have got another hit. Another one. Because this is getting ridiculous, but like I said, if Beatrice didn't come out, they probably would have got another hit. In my opinion, they probably would have got another hit. Uh, I need a couple of cards to make this hand better. It's a speed rides, or is it... PK fire, yeah, you just like, you don't know anymore. And I said Phantom Knights, I could probably see you not hitting that. You know, that that's probably a little bit confusing. But Burning Abyss, like really, like they're pretty much the only deck that really survived the the Duelist Alliance nuking era. The only deck. Shadal's gone. Cleez gone. Necro's gone. Shadal's gone. But BA, right here, right the fuck here. No, and it is PK fire. All right. So, that should be fun, and by fun, I mean absolutely not fun. Because <laughs> this deck is so fucking powerful. <laughs> it floats like a son of a bitch. I mean, Burning Abyss have always floated like a son of a bitch, but then you throw in fucking Phantom Knights who float like a son of a bitch too, and you just get a ridiculously strong deck. Like, holy shit. You know, multiple Dantes, like, fucking milling multiple cards from multiple floating action, like... It's just not good. It really isn't. Look at this shit. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop it up right now. Scoop it up. I'm not gonna face the top, top tier deck with this garbage ass. I mean, sure, I'm playing Monarchs, but I'm playing fucking Earthbound, so no thank you. Come on. And he milled beautifully, too. Like, oh my god. <sighs> Be right back. Like, I, I, you should've hit Burning Abyss. I don't know what you should've hit, because Dante the One seems kind of harsh, but god, it sure, sometimes it sure feels like they should've hit Dante the One. It sure fucking feels like I did not open up well at all. I opened up like booty. Like, well, I need probably need one more card. I might even draw into the card I need with my next draw, but I don't like going fucking first with this deck. There's no point. Like, yeah, so I can bust out an Earthbound Immortal and not attack you directly? Like, no, thank you. I would I'd much rather attack you directly. So, and because of that, Gusto Metalphosis. I mean,. I guess it doesn't say by your opponent, so all your gustles will go off and you metaphosis. Just seems like metaphosis are being more of an enabler for anything. Yang Zing, I think Yang Zing metaphosis is better, just because I don't think gustles is that great of a deck, but hey, you know. You know if, if you're gonna go ahead and try to do a, a floaty synchro mechanic, I'd rather go Yang Zing than gustos, but hey, more power to you, right? So. 
powerful. Yep, emergency teleport. I mean, it only went down to two, so. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I said it's ridiculous. Like, you get you, no sacrifice or anything. You just summon a psychic from your fucking deck. No punishment, no restriction, no nothing. Summon a fucking psychic from your deck. Who thought that was a good idea? Oh, there goes half my life points. That's what I get for going freaking, uh, first. I would have went second. <laughs> I guess we'll just pretend that I'm going second, and then my opponent already has an established fucking field. And then he already has a fucking crystal meth. That's not what I needed at all. As soon as I active summon my monster and activate my effect, I'm fucked, so. Maybe maybe he'll fuck up and he'll think that I don't have anything. Let's we'll try. Cause uh, he activates, which means that crystal meth can be like no, and then I'll be like scoop. You should stop me. You should stop me. My plays are obvious. I obviously have a Monarch Storm Force. You should stop me. Unless you're thinking, oh, he has something bigger. I'll stop the Monarch. Like, no, you should probably stop the Eidos. The Eidos plus Monarch Storm Force means you should probably get contributed. Wow, you let me get that off? Good job. Good job. So, I'll go ahead and play my Emperor, which is fine. Play my Monarch Storm Force, which is fine. Thank you for the additional tribute. Ah, you fucked up. Ah, ah. <laughs> you should have stopped it. I would have. I would have. Because there's no one who just summons Eidos unless there's a Monarch Storm Forth or something planned. You know, whether it be a Monarch Storm Forth or your your field spell to decrease a higher level Monarch. Like something's gonna happen. So, you know, like for goodness, I guess you're like, nah, nah. I, I'd rather stop the Monarch. I don't know. And then he scooped it right up. You had the advantage, like, look, I lost half my life plus, but I guess I, I mean, I don't have my field spell, so you wouldn't have been locked out of your extra deck, which I guess would have been fine, but. Ah, uh, another duel, fair back. Ah, look at it, and broken. Nothing I did was broken. It's not like I did, you know, pantheism or anything like that. I just gives me another tribute summon. That's not broken. Monarch Storm 4th, I mean, that's just, that's, that card, that's debatable. That's debatable. That card's very powerful, so. That's debatable. But nothing, I didn't do anything like, oh my god, shit, your pants fucking broken, did I? I don't think I did, so. It's your fault. You should have negated my Eidos. I mean, I don't know why you didn't. Because if you negate my Eidos, that means that straight up I'm not doing anything else in Monarchs because I don't have another additional tribute summon or normal summon. So I'm done with my turn. You didn't have to worry about anything else if you just negated my Eidos. So, not my fault. It's your fault. This <laughs> hands. Okay, it really depends on what my opponent has. So I can go ahead and activate domain, summon idea, idea, summon idols, tribute you off for every I spend something by sending, of course, those two. Even though I never use Prime, like, I'm probably the worst Monarch player ever because I never fucking use Prime. Like, <laughs> like, oh my god. Go ahead and play it terraforming. Go ahead and get my domain. So, at least the terraformings in the domains seem like they're going okay today. So that's great. So, uh,. Go ahead and activate you. I'll probably spin back the monster. Because I'm not sure if there's going to be anything in his hand that has a threat. Especially with me having Psalm Strike and Solemn Warning. So, you know, while the monster could be a threat this turn. Especially with no march. So, tribute off you two. I mean you. Activate you. Send. Oh, wait. I can just grab a march right now. So, so send Pen Deity. Send OG. Go ahead and pick something from the hand, because I'm about to get March anyway, so you can lose that for me. Then activate Pendidi, like, look at this shit. Look at this shit. Like, what were they thinking? And, I, and the sad thing is, I'm not even running Tenacity. I'm not even running I can't run Tenacity, because of my Earthbound Immortals, but and the only stat-wise thing that can run Tenacity is a Reaper. So I can't, I'm not even running Tenacity, and look how fucking ham this shit's going. Like, ridiculous, ridiculous. Go ahead and attack. That shouldn't be anything too threatening. No. Alright, well, I pretty much win. Locking locking Fluffles out of the extra deck? That's game. Like, what are you gonna do? Hopefully you have Twin Twisters. That'd be great. Twin Twisters, definitely. You have to. And I have a warning, and I have a strike, and you're locked out of the extra deck, and I have an untouchable 28 beater monarch. Like, mmm. It's not looking good for you, Mr. Fluffle player, but hey, what you gonna do, right? Monarchs didn't get touched, so. Go down to Walmart, buy three structure decks, slap them together, and go to town on the meta because that's just, you know. There's actually, we were actually discussing, and uh, I think it was the end of commentary about structure decks being top tier. And Omega disagreed with me saying that, you know, you like that, so it's Yu Gi Oh! is affordable. My problem with that is that it floods the meta because of the easy accessibility. 
and I just can't respect you. You know, you want to spend three, four hundred dollars on Draco Pals. I mean, if that's what you want to do, I respect your wishes. You you put a lot of time and effort and money, whether you had a job and you're working your ass off to pay for the deck to play for Yu Gi Oh. That's fine. You know, you're you're putting in that work. You're you're doing something. You're being creative. You have effort. But in the same comparison. You go down to Walmart and buy three fucking structure decks and slap them together and you're top tier, you're tier one? No. No. Mon I, I don't mind if structure decks are tier two. You know, I totally don't mind if it's like, oh my god, you know, despite all the tier one decks that are topping this tier two de structure deck that's top, that's, that'd be awesome. That's cool. That's fine. I'm fine with that. But you go down to Walmart, you buy three structure decks and you automatically have a tier one fucking deck? No, I don't like that. Because then you're just going to flood the meta game with it. Like, think about it. Think about it, especially the smaller tournaments like your locals originals, where people why why the fuck should I you know spend a whole bunch of money trying money trying to get like Phantom Knight or a whole bunch of money trying to get fucking uh, you know Cosmos when I could just fucking compete with them with Monarchs and that's the mentality is gonna go through a lot of people's head. Next thing you know, you're gonna be seeing a butt ton of Monarchs being played at tournaments. That's boring. That's really boring. That's a boring ass meta, you know. So I don't feel I don't I feel that. You know, structure decks being top tier doesn't, you know, broaden the the horizon. It only hurts it. You know, like I said, if it was the structure deck was tier two, then yeah, it broaden the horizon because then you would see people actually attempting to play these tier two structure decks and beat the top tier matter. They'd have something to fight for. But if all you have to do is go to Walmart, buy three structure decks, and you're already top tier shit, then what's the effort? What's the what's the strive? What are you striving for? It's boring. So that's how I feel about it. I don't like that. I've never liked when structure decks are top tier. I kind of feel like, what's the point? What, what's the point? And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, what's the fucking point of me trying to, you know, create, like, pay money to make, like, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of something. I don't know. Pay money to make, like, Yang Zings or something. Something like that. What's the point when all you gotta do, all my opponent has to do, I spent all this time, this effort, this money creating this deck. What's the point when my opponent just goes to Walmart, buys three Monarch Structure decks, and then I lose? You know, that's not fun. That's not that's not cool. That's not creative. It's nothing. Talk directly for a game. I win. You know, you did you well, you couldn't do anything anyway. So it's just I don't know. I don't know. So like I said, I'm, I'm not I'm not for reset buttons. We don't need we need only to reset the whole meta and crush the top tier decks and then, you know, the new top tier decks would be like, you know, Yang Zings and that and stuff like, like I said I, I definitely think that if you're tier one and straight up if you are tier one if you're the tippy top and we absolutely don't want you anymore and you're going on tier zero if you're tier zero pretty much you're dead you know and by tier zero I mean in in a YCS in a YCS right there's a top 32 right if pretty much every YCS out of the 32 you're getting like 14 15 tops you know almost you know, pretty much close to half of the top 32 seats, you're pretty much tier zero. You know, you're, you're despite the other tier one depth, you know, popping in and out. If if you're like in the teens when it comes to uh, topping, then you're pretty much tier zero. And if you and if you get killed, respectively, so. but tier one, you should get hit too. You know, so that's how I feel. Draco Palace were pretty much tier zero, pretty much tier point five, I guess you could say. I don't know, but they were the best. There's no doubt. There's no debate. They were the best. Hit them, sure. But everybody else gets two. Cosmos, you get some too. Indirect hits. Just like uh, Burning Abyss. Indirect hits. Monarchs, you get some hits too. Burning Abyss, you need to get more hits. Because you're just, you are just tier one from your existence. So you need to get hit, you know? And anything else, you know? Uh, I'd probably stop right there. I don't think that, you know, Mermel Lanterns probably don't need to be hit. Maybe. I mean, besides taking away your Norton. Like, that needs to be done. Uh, that probably, that would probably been the best you could thing you could have done versus uh, Lanterns Mermel. just... Damn Norton, but, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it, so, anyway, tell me what you guys feel about reset buttons, do you feel that every single list we should, you know, nuke the, the metagame, similar to what we did in Duelist Alliance era, and we had to create a whole new metagame, which was pretty interesting, but it just, we can't do that, when we do those, they're interesting, you know, we nuke Duelist Alliance, Klee's, Shadol's, uh, uh, Teller, I mean, no, Teller's were still kind of there, but they kind of fell off as well, uh, Klee's, Shadal's, Necros, uh, and to an extent Ritual Beast, you know, Dual Science nuked that era and we created a whole new era. We had, you know, Cosmos, we had Infernoids, we had, we had a whole, pretty much a whole new era and the, the, to the era that we're currently at now. 
Dude, those are fun. Those are when those when those happen. They're awesome, and we praise those lists for being the best lists, you know. And like I said, this is coming from a very conservative player. Those, those are like the best lists, but we can't do like every list. But in those times in between those every lists, I'd rather have you know hit the top deck, hit everybody else a little bit, than just hit the top deck and everybody else go free, especially a fucking structure deck. Like, come on, you you hit the wrong structure deck. You hit Wisdom Eye down to one, and then left Monarchs alone. Like, really, really, come on. Come on, so. Anyway, tell me what you guys think and uh, how ban lists should be addressed. Do you agree that we should hit everything, uh, you know, everything a little bit? Or do you think that every single list, we should just nuke the meta and create a brand new meta every single list? I mean, I mean, who the hell? We don't know when we're going to get our list. I mean, if that would really occur, then we'd get lists, lists way, way less often. It would not be like every three or four months we get a new list. If we were nuking the meta, it'd probably be like every six months or so. But still... Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Daily Duels. Of course, I'll be back tomorrow playing them Resonators, joined by Attack Partner. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support. And uh, yeah, see you guys uh, tomorrow with more Daily Duels. Also, um, uh, as of right now, Wednesday will probably be the last day for deck suggestions. So if you haven't got up your your deck suggestions for Daily Duels already, I'll probably be putting up the polls tomorrow. And uh, we'll be seeing uh, the new rotation uh, next, this upcoming week. So uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for doing uh, that for me, and uh, thanks for watching.